So Apple finally did it. They dropped that massive health feature everyone's been waiting for, blood pressure alerts for the Apple Watch. It's a huge deal, promising to put some pretty crucial health insights on literally millions of wrists. But, you know, there's a lot of hype, and honestly, a lot of confusion too. So let's just cut right to it. The big question on everyone's mind, can your watch actually measure your blood pressure? We're gonna break down exactly what this new feature does, and just as importantly, what it doesn't do. And you can see why there's so much buzz, right? I mean, you just have to look at how Apple talked about this thing. The announcement got so much attention because they really positioned this as a major leap forward for personal health. Yeah, they used words like groundbreaking health insights, putting this new hypertension notification right at the center of it all. The goal here is to be a real game changer. But why is that so important? And this is why it is such a huge deal. According to the World Health Organization, 1.28 billion adults around the world have hypertension. And they call it the silent killer for a reason. Most of the time, there are no symptoms at all. Okay, so how on earth does a little watch on your wrist even begin to tackle a problem this big? Well, the answer is in some tech that's both pretty clever and, yeah, a little complex. It all starts with those green lights on the back of your watch. You know the ones. This tech is called photoplethysmography, or PPG for short. Basically, it shines light into your skin and then measures how much of that light bounces back. It's essentially seeing the pulse of blood as it flows through your tiny blood vessels. Okay, so this diagram really helps break it down. You can see how that raw data from the light sensor eventually becomes a health alert. It starts with a cuffless device, like your watch, just gathering that raw data. Then it's pushed through these complex algorithms that use things like your personal info and machine learning to turn that pulse data into an estimation of your blood pressure. And that word estimation is super important here. It's not a direct measurement. It's a very educated guess. And this is a really, really important piece of the puzzle. This is not an instant reading. It's not like you just press a button and get a number. Nope. As you can see here, the watch is quietly collecting data in the background for a full 30 days. It's looking for consistent long-term trends before it even thinks about sending you a notification. Okay, but this is where we have to get into the fine print. Because what this feature doesn't do is just as important as what it does. This is it. The million dollar question. After all that data collection, all that analysis, is the watch going to show me my actual numbers? You know, like 120 over 80? The answer is a big, clear no. This feature is absolutely not designed to give you specific on-the-spot blood pressure readings. This slide really lays it all out. What you get is a notification, basically a warning flag and a nudge to go see your doctor. What you don't get are those specific numbers or any kind of real-time measurement. In fact, Apple's own advice is to follow up by taking your blood pressure for seven days with a proper traditional cuff. And Apple is also super specific about who this is not for. If you're under 22, if you're pregnant, or if you've already been diagnosed with hypertension, this tool isn't meant for you. It's really designed to try and catch cases that haven't been diagnosed yet. So that's the tech side. But what are the actual doctors and scientists saying about all this? Well, they're definitely intrigued by the potential, but they're also being pretty cautious. This quote from Hypertension Canada pretty much sums up where the experts stand. They see the promise, for sure, but they make it very clear that these devices are not ready to be used for making real medical decisions. You always have to confirm the readings with a validated cuff-based device. Experts are also worried about this thing called pseudo-precision. Think of it like this. Imagine a device that you calibrate with a real blood pressure reading. Then, for weeks, it just keeps showing you that same number over and over. It looks precise, right? but it's not actually tracking any real changes. It's just repeating old information, which isn't clinically useful. So you're probably thinking, wait a minute, didn't this get FDA clearance? Doesn't that mean it's been tested and it works? Well, yes, it has been tested, but it's really important to understand what those tests actually cover. Getting proper medical validation is a whole other level. It's not just one test while you're sitting perfectly still. True validation means putting the device through its paces in all kinds of real-world situations. When you're sitting, standing, exercising, even checking to see if it can accurately track changes after someone takes medication. Every single one of these tests is crucial to prove a device is actually reliable enough for clinical use. Okay, so after all that, all the limitations, all the warnings from experts, you have to wonder, right? Is this thing genuinely useful or is it just a gimmick? Well, this is where the public health angle just changes the whole conversation. 
According to the WHO, a shocking 42% of people with hypertension don't even know they have it. They're just walking around with a condition that puts them at a higher risk for heart attack and stroke. And this is Apple's big play. The company thinks this feature could flag over 1 million people with undiagnosed hypertension in just its first year. That's a million people who might get prompted to talk to a doctor when they otherwise might not have. And that brings us to the single most important thing to remember about this whole feature. The Apple Watch is a screening tool. It is not a diagnostic tool. Its one and only job is to raise a flag and get you to start a conversation with a real doctor. It was never, ever meant to replace one. So, where does that leave us? On the one hand, we have this incredible new tool that could potentially save lives by catching a silent killer. But on the other hand, it raises some pretty big questions. Are we looking at the future of public health screening, or are we just creating a new wave of digital anxiety? For now, the answer is probably somewhere in the middle.